Uh, it's, um, it's a great pleasure to have Simone Curran with us this morning. Good morning, Simone. What a great background you have there. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> ladies. Simone, just for people who don't know you, and I know this is not on your list of questions, but can you give me a bit of background, who you are? And... Sure. Child yes. of God. Yes. <laughs> Mother of four beautiful children, um, married to the same man for coming up, I think, to 15 years. Um, love life. I haven't um, been a Christian all my life. I got saved in Belfast, Northern Ireland, and that totally changed my world. Uh, lived in Melbourne um, for some time, worked with Churches of Christ for uh, five years, worked for the Bible Society for a year, uh, worked for a global company for a year. Yeah, you know, I've got, yeah, one of, one of three. Um, yeah, three girls. I'm in the middle. That's good. Yeah. So, Simone, we've got you on this morning for you to talk about your business. Yes. So, let, let's... Like, why did you start it in the first place? Let's get back, because there's quite a story around that. Yeah, God's amazing. So uh, I was a stay-at-home mum for eight years, and I felt a little bit of a nudge. I felt a nudge. Uh, and there's different scriptures that came up. I remember reading about Ruth, and Ruth went to work. And I thought, oh, my goodness, Lord, I think it's maybe time for me to go back to work. And anyway, I think it was really, one thing that's really important to me is listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to guide my steps. And I remember when I was pregnant with our first daughter, this has nothing to do with the window cleaning or wife. Yeah. It's more. But it's a background. Track. It's a background and that's, that's key. Yes. And you can keep you on track with. Yes. I'm a storyteller. Okay. So anyway, I remember my neighbour, she was saying to me, Simone, she goes, before you have a child, make sure you rest. That was one thing that she didn't do. So I stopped working about six weeks before our first baby came along. And I remember I was reading the Bible one day and it was from the book of Haggai. Now, our child's um, due date was the 23rd of August. And I was reading the book of Haggai and it opens with on the 29th of the month. And I thought, oh, wow, okay. Then I picked up another book and it said, on the 29th of the month. And I was like, oh my goodness, Lord, are you telling me our daughter's birthday? So anyway, I shared that with my husband and lo and behold, when she laid on the 28th, she was born on the 29th. And I remember just pondering those things in my heart. You know, Mary, Jesus' mother, she was putting things in her heart. I didn't go to broadcast anything like that. But this was the big bump in my interview with the Lord. The Lord actually told me when I was going to give birth to our daughter, and that was through the scriptures. So I think in like starting the business as well, I think you're just trying to tune into the voice of the Holy Spirit, listening to the voice of the Lord. With our second child, I remember I was in, um, remember, where's I'm a storyteller, so if I go off track, get yes. back on track. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> so with our second child, uh, Samuel, I remember we were praying for another child. You can see that I'm a mum at heart. I happen to yes. run this business. It got a yes. blessing. I'm a mum at yeah. heart, you know. Yes. So anyway, um, you know, praying for a second child. And I remember I was in church and I said, in a year's time, you'll be holding a son in your arms. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. And I, you know, showed my mother-in-law and she said, write it down. So I wrote it down. And I think that was on the 19th of May or something like that. Lo and behold, in a year's time, I was holding a son in my arms. It fell for May. And I remember another scripture God spoke to me. It says, if God says he's going to do it, he will do it and he did it because I doubted the Lord. I'm human and you know what's happening. But lo and behold, God watches over his word and if he says he's going to do it, he'll do it. And I just say, where's to all the girls out here? If God has said something to you, he's going to do it. He's faithful. Yeah. So anyway, um, yes, why I started the business. I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted also to be able to pay the school fees. My husband and I, Patrick, we made a choice that we wanted to send our children to a Christian school. And of course, as you know, Wes, it's not cheap. So it's I thought, not. okay, well, no, <laughs> what, can, what can I do there? So I thought, okay, well, you know, I, I want to um, be my own boss. And I also wanted to, to be able to, you know, contribute in paying for school fees. We do have four children. Um, I had the four children in the space of five and a quarter years. So they're between the ages of eight and 30. I had to write that down. <laughs> 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 so 
So anyway, yeah, at heart, I am a mum and I happen to have this business that God has just blessed and blessed and blessed. So yeah, why I started the business, I don't know. Okay, so, but now you had a very unique way of actually how you came up with what type of business to start. Yes, yes. it was quite a journey and I prayed about it. I know, like, just recently through this COVID-19, I actually joined the Rise Up Challenge, which was just phenomenal. And anyway, they often say is, if people are looking for a business, find a problem and how can you solve it? Yes. What's the problem? How can you solve it? That wasn't my journey. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I think what we've got to learn as well, because my daughter reminded me last night, she goes, Mummy, are you going to tell the girls to make sure that they run in their lane and don't look to the left and don't look to the right, what other people are doing? Stay your course. I said, no, I wasn't, honey, but I will. So <laughs> I to say to all of the girls out there that are watching, Keep your eyes on your lane because I know in different times in my life when I look to the left, look to the right, what other people are doing, I get discouraged, you know, but whereas if I think, no, 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 this is what I'm supposed to be doing, keep focus, I do it. So anyway, I prayed, I sought the Lord, you know, and um, Patrick and I had done a, a, a course, uh, financial ministries, and then we, it led on to um, other courses about learning to handle your finances in a way that is pleasing to the Lord. So now I was listening to one of these podcasts and um, somebody was talking about business and business ideas. And also when they are debt free, they do a debt free screen. And anyway, oh, I'm debt free. Yay. And so anyway, this particular person happened to mention somebody and I went onto the web, I looked it up and I just looked at the business ideas. I printed it off. There was, I think, 99 business ideas. Get a hard teacher. No, I don't think so. Artists, no, I don't think so. And I stopped the window cleaner. I was like, how hard can the window cleaner be? Little did I know, Wes. So that's how it all came about. Yeah. But also, like in saying that, I would encourage girls as well. And like with our daughter, our daughter's 13, she's just recently started her business. And I said, sweetheart, what do you enjoy to do? What do you enjoy doing? And find a way to get paid. And I remember like one of my first bosses, that's what his hobby was. Um, he was, yeah, anyway, he looked after the AFL Players Association and the NBL Players Association. He said, I love sport and I want to get paid to do that. And it always stuck with me. Okay, so find something that you do like to do and get paid for it. Do I like window cleaning? You know, <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> but you enjoy a clean window and you can see the results of the clean window behind you. Yes. Thank you, Wes. You know what? I actually paid one of our staff because I haven't had the time to do it during this week. I love it. You feel good when you have clean windows. If you're I, feeling a bit down, go clean a window. It's, it's amazing. And, and I need to say that you've come and cleaned our house and yes. I was surprised, number one, how long it took to yes. do and what was involved in how thorough you are. But the huge difference it yes. made afterwards was, was quite incredible. Uh, you do that. So it was one thing, you know, to hear and walk with you for a while. It's seeing you cleaning it, then to have it actually done uh, was quite amazing. So, yes. Simone, you just started and everything fell into place, didn't it? So, no, <laughs> not. <laughs> so... So what was involved in getting up and going for you, for your business? It took yeah. us through those initial stages because you had some huge learning experiences that I, I often tell others about as oh, well. Oh, wow. I think one thing you've got to do is learn from your mistakes. And a mistake's actually not a mistake, it's a learning. And that's what yeah. I think is a big lesson I've learned. But anyway, the thing is, I didn't know how to clean a window. Yes. I had no idea where. I had no idea to clean a window. We had small children and of course, like our home was lovely and clean, but my glass was absolutely disgusting. So I would have fingerprints all over the glass and it looked terrible. I remember when we moved house, I actually, I don't know whether I paid the friend, I can't remember, but I got her in to clean the glass um, so we would get our bond money back when we were renting because I seriously, I had no idea. So I needed to learn how to clean a window. So I just Google searched, but okay, I watch as many videos as I can. Just learn technique. How do you clean windows like a professional window cleaner? You know, like how they do the fanning? No idea, Wes. I think yeah. I just did the straight pulls for many years. I got my clean glass. 
So anyway, the other thing which was quite just amazing, amazing, amazing for me in getting the business up and running is that if I was going to run a business, I wanted to do it well. I wanted to do it well and I wanted to be good at it. So anyway, I prayed. I said, well, who can I learn from? I want to learn from somebody. So I just Google search window cleaners and I look for somebody who had fantastic reviews. And I thought, right here, I want to learn from that person. I also looked for somebody that wasn't in the same geographical area as I was because I didn't want to appear to be a threat to them. So anyway, I actually found somebody on the north side. His name was Ulick. And if, if you're starting a business and you can find an Ulick or you can find a, a Wes Leak, somebody to help you and give you the skills, it's phenomenal. So I am so thankful to Ulick for this. So what I did was I prayed. I said, I want to learn from somebody. I want to learn from Ulick. I didn't know him. I thought, this is going to be weird. I'm going to call this guy and say, how do I clean windows? How do I run a window cleaning business? Who is this random person, you know? So anyway, I joined a Facebook group and it was a professional window cleaners. There's over 2,000 professional window cleaners. Most of them are in the UK. Anyway, I get onto the group. How do I clean a pool fence? Where are you from, mate, you know? Said, well, I'm from Brisbane. They said, get in touch with this guy. He's a good bloke. Who was the bloke that they recommended I get in touch with? Oh, right. yes. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. So anyway, Ulick actually came along to my first clean. Ulick helped me know how to price things. It's just like a rare individual that will help somebody and pay it forward. Yeah, so just phenomenal. So anyway, the next thing I needed to do is I could only clean my window so many times, Wes. Yes. You know? <laughs> so many times. I think this particular pane of glass was so clean. Oh my goodness me. I timed myself cleaning the piece of glass, you know, and then I thought, righty, I, I need to ask friends. And we've got a beautiful mutual friend, Heidi and Alec Robertson. Yeah. I asked them, can I come and clean some glass? Sure, no worries. I asked another friend, can I come and clean your pool fence? Absolutely, no worries. So I needed to get the skills up to know how I had to do it and what I had to do. And the interesting thing I didn't realise at the time when I was doing is that while I was actually collecting reviews, and yeah. I say that's so important, collect reviews, collect feedback. They sent me a text message or I got an email and I started to collect it. And so when it did come time to get a website up and running, I thought, oh my goodness, I can use these as reviews. I got that permission and then I did it. So that was just something that kind of, you know, happened. The next thing is that I needed customers. I yes. Customers. <laughs> You're not in business unless you have customers. It's, it's, uh, it's right. like you say that, but some people say they're in business and they actually don't have customers. And so it, it's fascinating. Yes. Yeah. So I guess there's two ways that I could have started the business. One was to start it from scratch, which is what I did and I grew it, or you can go and buy a business. So I decided that I would just, you know, start it from scratch. So I, I had to learn the art of cold calling. So I, I thought, so we've got two types of customers. We have residential customers and we also have business or commercial customers. So for the commercial customers, I thought, you know what? I'll do shop front cleaning because then I can do it. I can drop our children at school. I can pick them up. I'll just go and clean some shop front windows. So what I did is I would just, I didn't know how to do it, Wes. So I went to clean, I said, do you need to windows clean? <laughs> Or, oh, here's a brochure. And then I'd run out because I was a bit, you know, oh, hey, what are they going to think of me? You know? So anyway, through coaching and other things, now I've got a script and I know how to actually go in and approach somebody, respect their time as well. So, you know, I learned that skill. Other things, what's involved in getting a business up and running for me is I would pray, ask God to position you so you're at the right place at the right time. And I've had so many stories. I remember when I was first starting the business, I was walking to the Wynnum Library with one of our young children holding her hands. I remember it. And I saw a window cleaner cleaning windows in Wynnum. And I went up to him. I said, how are you going? Yeah, good. So how much would you charge for something like this? You know, because I had no idea. Remember, I had no idea how to charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had no idea, what, you know, what to buy. Yeah. And, oh, I charge about da 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 And he goes, oh, have you got a shop? I said, oh, no, uh, you know, I'm starting a window cleaning business. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of said to me, oh, you, you bugger. You know? <laughs> so anyway, you know, 
And I'm like, well, you know, I didn't know what to do. And but the interesting thing is, fast forward a year, we exchanged business cards. I had a business card. I don't even know if I had a business card then, Wes, but we exchanged details. And a year later, I think it was about a year later, I got this call from this person. He was ready to retire. I ended up, this is such a God story, Wes, I ended up getting all of his customers. Wow. It's just amazing. So, and you didn't even up, pay for them. He just gave them to you, didn't he? It was quite a journey. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I did. So to, to, to start it all off, he introduced me to the customers and then I would give him a cut of all of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I did it. But the interesting thing, even how that happened was, again, it just listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Listen yeah. to the voice of the Holy Spirit as well. I don't often wear travel in my car to go out to Redland Bay to do quotes. Because it's like an hour round trip. So yeah, I don't feel way. of actually giving a bit of an estimate. Then if they're interested, I may travel out. But I had a prompt, go to Redland Bay to do a quote. I'm like, okay, I'll go to Redland Bay to do the quote. Lo and behold, on my way to Redland Bay, who did I see? This and I did circles. I'm like, no way, it's him. No way, it's him. So I just stopped and said, you know, how are you going? And then that's how that all eventuated where I yeah. ended up, you know, getting his customer. So... Yeah. So, so, Simone, you keep saying this, but it is being attuned to the voice of God Absolutely. and listening to it. And, and you can pray those things, but you don't pray and sit and think, you know, wait for it to come. It's as you're going out yep. that it happens. But then you need to grab hold of it and go and talk to the people or, or do whatever God's saying to you to do at the time. Because it's like, it's a combination, isn't it? God speaks, but you have to act. Absolutely. Yes. That, that's the same like we learned with when we did the Crown Financial Ministry part. Yes. We do our part, God does his part. That's right. You spend more money than what you've got. That's our part. Yeah. And God does his part. So, yeah, other things like with pricing, I didn't know how to price, so I had to learn the skill of pricing as well. Um, the other thing, the interesting thing for Patrick and I when we decided, because of the Crown Financial Ministry course, is we're not going to borrow any money from anyone. So we actually lent the business from our own budget $400. And what I would do is I would get a job, I get money, go buy tools. Yeah. Get a job, <laughs> get the money, go buy tools. So that's how, you know, for me, and again, I've got to say, you've got to run your own race. That was the way that I felt the Lord guiding us to do it. That might not be the case for other people. So I think you've got to have your own convictions and do what you believe that the Lord would be guiding you and helping you to, you know, get your business up and running. So the is other skill... Oh, sorry, so, you go so Simone, let's just pick that up. So you started with a budget of four hundred bucks. Yeah. But so so you, and then you bought tools with with the profits from every job. So that would have taken a while for you to get up and going to be able to actually draw a wage in your business. And I think, I think some people think that I'll go into business and the money will just flow the next day. So money flows, but it doesn't actually flow into your pocket uh, the next day. So how, how long before you were actually taking money out and, you know, being able to start paying school fees, like was your goal? And Yeah. Wes, I remember I did the course with you. What was it? Turn your business idea, business idea into reality. Yes. reality. Yeah. I remember that. And I remember that you used me as an example, you know, saying, okay, well, what's your goal? And I told you the amount, you know, hear me, you go, yeah, you get that number and you do this. Put me out, Wes. <laughs> didn't have the capacity in my mind to think bigger yes you know i had a small mindset i thought no we'll just do this do this do this so, sorry i'm not answering your question how long did it take yeah <laughs> i really I, I don't know i don't know i think the other thing that my husband reminded me of this morning he says oh, i remember honey like you know when you were praying about the businesses do not despise the day of small beginning yes yes god likes to see the work begin yeah. Oh gosh, I don't know how long it was. Let's just say, like, we make enough money now to cover the school, you know, the school yeah. fees. Um, you, yeah, you've just got to keep sewing back in, sewing back in, sewing yeah. back in, sewing back in, sacrifice, invest, and then it's just worth it. It's worth it. So, yeah, I don't know remember you, whether you remember this saying from the Crown Financial Ministry course, but small things as uh, small things are small things, but faithfulness with a small thing is a big thing. And, and um and that's the thing that god is actually looking faithfulness is a huge thing yeah. in his is his and he sees that when you're faithful with the little 
he wouldn't trust you with much. And that would be the story of, of your business, really, that you've been faithful, you've learned, you've gone, you've gone from business to business. And it hasn't always worked. Like you've had some, some issues along the way, but as you've grown, you've been able to focus on those and to move forward. So what are some other key learnings that you've had, Simone, as you've gone through? Again, it's coming back to listen to the Holy Spirit. I remember I started off as a sole trader, then became a company, but then I wanted to take on some staff. And um, I think I've got to listen to the Holy Spirit. I remember, like I am a Christian, and the values, if you see on our website, it, it's um, they're Christian values without saying, I am a Christian. It's just beautiful values. So anyway, I want to listen to the Holy Spirit and um, I had two people, two people apply for a job and both were Christians and I felt the Holy Spirit say it's neither of those. And I'm like, okay, so what? Well, I don't have another applicant. What are we going to do? Do you know? And so anyway, this young boy at the time, he applied and I felt, I went and met him and interviewed him and I, and I felt the Lord say, this is the one. And he's still working with me to this day and he has been so faithful and amazing. Again, I think it was just me tuning into the voice of the Holy Spirit, listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because I often tell my staff, like I emailed them last night and I just praised them up. I said, thank you so much for adhering to our call. He's one of the excellent work. And I think, how many, I think we have about four customers in the last couple of days. And all of them was just amazing feedback. So I just fed that back to the team. And I said, thank you so much for representing our company so well. So, yeah, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. The other thing that I learned was, and this is from a beautiful lady, you might notice I have facial paralysis. I woke up one morning and, um, you know, look, half the side of my face was broken properly. But anyway, so I went and saw a naturopath and... Um, I remember Sandy saying to me, she goes, Simone, you are in business to make money. You're in business to make money. And I thought, oh my goodness, that just resonated with me. And like, yeah, I am. But also I think I need to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit as well. Because different times God's spoken to me and said, offer that price, do it at a discounted rate. And I will do that. But at the same time, I run the business to make money for our family. So, yeah. Also, the other thing was, get a training, get a training, what you what you need, like I've I'll do the course for you with. I have a business coach. I pay for that. I do other um, courses. So just get skilled up in the area that you need to do. The other thing is ask questions. Ask questions. You know, what I've learned is to ask questions. If I don't know how to do something, ask questions. Seek somebody out. Other people have probably gone ahead. Well, they have gone ahead of me and they know more than me. And I look now at my journey. I've been in business for five years and I think, oh my goodness, like for anybody even, if there's girls out there listening today and you think, okay, what kind of business can I have or what can I do? Oh my goodness, what would I teach myself five years ago? And you realise how much you've actually learned in the journey and how much you can give to other people. I had one of the girls um, employed. She's gone off now and started her own window cleaning business in the Gold Coast. And so I'm coaching her and helping her, paying it forward. And I just like surprised myself. Oh my goodness, I've actually learned a bit in the past five years. So yeah, ask for help. Don't give up. Don't give up. That's another thing that I have learned. Do you know how many times I've cried with? I remember we went out on a double date. Like seriously, I went out on a double date with Alec and Heidi. Yes. And it was a beautiful night. And then I remember Alex says, so how's the business going for me? He may burst out crying. I said, I want to be a mum. I want to be a mum. I don't want to do this. Do you know? Because I have such a mama's heart with. I thought, I don't want to do this. You know, and then just recently, I think I was crying again because we've got, you know, God's been guiding us to do something different in our world, you know, and um, and I'm like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? And I was at a coaching session and I'm crying and the compassionate business coach goes and he says, what are you crying for? You know, I said, how am I going to do this? He goes, have you felt like this before? I'm like, yes. And he's going, has it been this bad? I'm like, no. And so anyway, I realised God's called me to this bit. He's going to look with me. He's going to look with me. And the Bible says he will gently lead mother sheep with young. And I think I'm now passionate and more fired up about the business and God using that as his vehicle. I pray when I go to the Lord, may I be the fragrance of Christ. Yeah. 
take and leave the fragrance of Christ behind. I don't have to tell them they need Jesus and they need to get saved. Do you know what I mean? But I just pray that I can change the atmosphere. I take the Holy Spirit. I carry the Holy Spirit presence with me into people's homes. So, yeah, what else have I learned? So much. If you want me to stop, put Virginia's team out of your way, Wes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get very practical because. <laughs> oh, God. You know, like what you were saying before about he was faithful with little. Yeah. And trust too much. I was not being faithful with the little ways yeah. in putting VST away. Mate, we had the best Christmas that year and I paid for it because I spent all the GST money. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, just learn. You've got, to be a, you've got to be a steward. This is God's business. He's the CEO. He owns it all. So I need to steward and manage well what God's entrusted to me. And I put the GST money away now, Wes. So. Yeah, that's good to hear. Yes. Yeah. I, how long did it take you to repay that GST money, by the way? Oh, heck. You know what tripped me up is was the Christmas time. I thought I had longer to pay it because the government actually gives you another month, I think, to report on it. But they, yes. oh, I can't remember. So that tripped me up. It didn't take me actually that long. Whereas God was okay, so faithful and good. When I repented, yes. he was so faithful, maybe a you know, couple of months. Yes. Yeah. Good. Gosh, I had a great Christmas anyway. <laughs> Okay, do that. So anything else, any other key learnings that you've had? Yes, I think the other thing is, like for all you girls listening out there, don't get your identity by what you do. Yeah. You know, so important, so yes. important. I yes. learned, like I, I struggled with that, Wes. I remember when I got saved, uh, I was, um, you know, an event manager and I ran sporting events, you know, and I the Lord saved me in Belfast, Northern Ireland, on, you know, in, in June. Um, 20 odd years ago and I came back and I thought okay Lord what am I going to do now you know and I applied for a job at Churches of Christ and I would not have applied for the job if they had to put admin assistant they actually had executive assistant so I thought well I can apply for that but pride with pride I'm an executive assistant do you know what I mean and over the years uh, like it's really interesting, you know, like our kids went to a local kindy and I, you know, I did the fundraiser or whatever and went out and got presents. And I've grown so much, I think, in needing acknowledgement, needing the praises of people. I don't need that anymore. And when they went out and said, oh, thank you, Simone, you know, for going around and getting all that, I was just like, ooh, don't bring attention to me. Do you know what I mean? So I think like for me, I learned that, um, you know, I had a season of being a stay-at-home mum and I did have, um, you know, I used to run the, you know, all the mummies and the bubbies would come over to our house and God used that as a ministry tool. Now God uses the business as a ministry tool, but I'm a child of God. I'm a mother, but I hope that makes sense. Yes. Yeah, it yes. does. Yeah, yes. yes. The other thing in just, yeah. So I learned a lot with. Okay. So Simone, uh, we do need to start wrapping things up, but sure. it is, it's a different season now. How's business in in this time? Yes. What's going on? Have you have you seen a downturn? Is it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm doing more for Facebook advertising than I ever have before. Yeah. So they need people to know that we are still operating. Yeah. Unfortunately, fortunately, we qualify for the job keeper. Yes. Um. So so for those who don't know who are not in business, it means that your turnover is down by at least thirty percent. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so you've qualified for it and yep. the government's helping you out. Yeah. Which is good. But you're doing something with that. You're paying it forward with that. Absolutely. So what Absolutely. Wes, when you ask me, have you got any offers? You know? Yes. Well, you know what I want to make you an offer, you and Pam an offer. I'm gonna come and clean your windows for you for free. Okay? <laughs> I'll get in touch with Pam and I'll organize it. Is that all right? <laughs> she will jump out of her skin. She will love that. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, so I've just put, like, you know, God's been so good to us, Wes. Do you know what I mean? And Patrick and I spoke about it, and I just put out on my personal, it's my personal page, in case it's not everybody's, you know. Yeah. Um, is just, like, we want to pay it forward. Like, we want to be, a, you know, we're receiving the blessing. So I know some people can't afford window cleaning, some people can, do you know what I mean? But we're being blessed, so why can't we go and pass that, you know, blessing on and clean some... You know, some of our friends. That, yeah. You know, you know yeah. 
I did just say I'm a bright so yeah but with wow. you say at the beginning it's just I want to thank you to you and Pam for rising up like how amazing is this that you have started this group women providing hope in a time of crisis that's phenomenal you guys you know so thank you it's just beautiful I think it's a safe space for women to ask for prayer as well because I've been praying for some of the girls as I've seen their posts come up and I think it's just beautiful like you're not okay to do that are you please? no no this is and and Look, Simone, it's you like I, I think I checked yesterday, it's now over seventeen hundred people. Yeah. Like it's just it's mind blowing because it keeps growing and, and I, I think it's time for a new round of things and, and I've got some things planned for that. Well, there's some things God's as you listen to the Holy Spirit, because this is it, it really came out of um, a group of women coming to me and saying, We need help at this time. How yeah. do we reach out? How do we have a broader thing? And I was having this interview and I was in the shower thinking, Oh Lord, I'm meeting with this person is what do you want to happen in this meeting? And he said, I want you to do something bigger than what you're thinking. And I thought, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And actually even this, I've actually hardly slept overnight. I don't know what's going on, but I was up doing the dishes at four o'clock this morning. Uh, Cause we hadn't done it last night and just, with praise and worship music on and God just started speaking to me about some stuff and thinking, how do we do that? And then, so anyhow, I put a list down and stuff and thinking, well, God, I've got, I've got, I was saying to you before, I've got a three week break coming up and um, God's just downloaded some things to do during that time. And I'm thinking, okay, you've got some things on your heart and your agenda. And, you know, like people think, well, what does window cleaning have with the kingdom of God? But actually, you're bringing dignity to people's homes. You're mm-hmm. like, you know, the women, you change people's lives through window cleaning. And, mm-hmm. and you wouldn't think, but this is what God does. When he drops something in your heart, you know, that's the kind of thing that happens. Well, Simone, anything else that's on your heart to share that, that God is... Oh, where's well, I could just go on all day. Yeah. <laughs> And then, well, this is what I would like to do. Can you pray for those that are listening? Oh, because because there are people that that they don't know what they're doing or where they're going or where they're heading at the moment or things are changing quite rapidly. Yeah. So you've been there. You you faced things. So mm-hmm. from that authority, can you pray? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Beautiful Jesus, I thank you that you are amazing and I thank you that you love your girls. You love your daughters, Lord Jesus. And I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit for those that are listening to this prayer, that they will know their value, that they will know their worth, that they will know that they have something to offer. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that you have called them for your purpose. Your word is that we are your workmanship created to do good works before the foundation of the world. And I pray for your daughters that they will partner with you and know the good works that you have called them to, that they will run their race, that they will not look to the left, that they will not look to the right, but that they will look to you, Lord Jesus, that they will hear your voice. Lord, give them fresh ears, Lord God, I pray, to hear your voice. The voice of the people, Holy Spirit, this is the way, my precious girl. May they partner with you, Lord God. It's not about them. It's not about them. Lord, it's about how you can use them, how you can use them and go through them in such a beautiful way. And I don't mean use them. Like I feel that there's women here that may have been used in the wrong way. That's not what I mean. And, oh, Lord Jesus, that is not your heart. It's about bringing beautiful fulfilment for them, that they can flourish, Lord, in their calling. So I pray, Lord God, for your amazing, amazing blessing upon each one that listens to this, Lord Jesus. May you touch them. May you spark them afresh, Lord God, with new passion and new vision. And Lord, may they go to that quiet place and just listen. Listen to the one who has made them. Bless them, I pray. Bless Wes and Pam as well. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, that the steps of the righteous, they are ordered by the Lord. And I thank you, Lord God, that you order their steps. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 So thank you so much, Simone. Now, if people want to connect with you, where do they go? We haven't even said the name of your business, you know. So good. 
<laughs> the other thing, sorry, Wes, the other thing is pray about a business name. Seriously, pray about yes. a business name. Our business name is Winner Manly Window Cleaning and Redlands Window Cleaning. We prayed about the business name. I remember I put the prayer request in at church. We were coming back from the Gold Coast. We were going through different business names. And I could not believe that the name Winner Manly Window Cleaning had not been taken. Yeah. In hindsight, so I registered, in hindsight, if people search for a window cleaner in my area, what are they search for? Winner Manly Window Cleaning. Window Cleaner Winner. Window yeah. Cleaner you know, and I come up. So yes. I don't pay a lot for Google AdWords because I'm organic. So I come up on the front page. Yes. So yeah, there you go. I, look, you know, the same ha happened with this, uh, coming up with the name for this group, uh, Women Providing Hope. Who would have thought that women, womenprovidinghope.com was still available? Like, you, you is wet. like, come on, God. Is that <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, so this is actually... Uh, so some of you know that we've done a we did another masterclass on overcoming constriction and a lot of that is actually about the name and getting the name right because the name is if you go back into naming is actually a god thing um and god gave adam the ability to to name animals um and so i've just been all reading about that uh, yesterday actually <laughs> so it's, oh, it's fascinating that you say that actually asking god for the name and the number of times I've heard business people say, you know, God just dropped a name into my mind. And then I, I searched and blow me down flat. The name was available on ASIC yeah. or, or in, yeah. um, uh, for the domain name. It's fantastic. God can give you the logo too, Wes. Yes. I remember sitting in a, in a cafe, having a coffee, you know, and just listening to, you know, because God, we also birthed the year later, Redlands Window Cleaning. And I remember it just, it was so easy. There was an ease about it. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, I think this is one of the things, Simone, is getting into the flow, what we call a flow, is, is when, you, when you humble yourself and yeah. say, like, okay, God, let's, uh, let's go with this. <laughs> yeah. You know, and and, and you, you're, when you humble yourself, it says he will lift you up. Yeah. So the fact that you can just slow down and say, okay, God, I'm here to listen to you. Yeah. What's on your heart? What's on your agenda? And I know, I know you're a great fan of this great book, Two Chairs. I love like that. Do that. And, and doing that, it's just the, uh, you know, taking that time to listen to God's voice and yeah. God, what's on your heart for me today? Because, um, you know, he, he's giving you and showing you things that you weren't expecting to happen. And uh, yes, but you go through, yeah. Yeah. Where's the big scripture that the Lord's been saying to me is uh, Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things that you know is not, that you don't even know about. And like, I've had that for months. So I'm thinking, oh Lord, I just need to keep calling on to you. And he does reveal things to us, eh? Yeah, yeah exactly. That's right. Excellent. Okay, well, ladies out there, share this video with others. Uh, I know it'll be a blessing to them. Thank you so much, Simone. So Window Manly Window Cleaning, if you need your windows cleaned, reach out to Simone and she will do that for you. Organize someone to do that. Hey, by the way, how many people have you got on team now? We've got three staff and a contractor. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I'm keeping my three staff, which is just amazing during this time. Yeah. Good. That's excellent. That's great. Thank you so much and have a great day. You too. Thanks, heaps, Wes. Okay. I've stopped the live stream and.